use the same data. If the data is kept in different files, there could be problems when an item of data needs updating, as it will need to be updated in all the relevant files. If this is not done, the data will be inconsistent, and this could lead to errors. The problem could be made even worse if different items of data are changed in different departments so that the invoice application uses a different address from the sales mailing list program for the same customer. The following diagram on the next slide shows how different applications will each have their own copy of the files they need in order to carry out the activities for which they are responsible. Diagram showing how different applications will each have their own copy of the files they need in order to carry out the activities for which they are responsible. One approach to solving the problem of each application having its own set of files is to share files between different applications. This will alleviate the problem of inconsistent data between different applications and is illustrated in the diagram below. The introduction of shared files solves the problem of inconsistent data across different versions of the same file held by different departments, but other problems may emerge, as indicated in the next slide. When each department has its own version of a file for processing, each department could ensure that the structure of the file suited their specific application. If departments have two share files, the file structure that suits one department might not suit another. For example, data might need to be sorted in a different sequence for different applications. For instance, customer details could be stored in alphabetical order or numerical order or ascending or descending order of customer number. Some applications may require access to more data than others. For instance, a credit control application will need access to customer credit limit information, whereas a delivery note printing application will only need access to customer name and address details. The file will still need to contain the additional information to support the application that requires it. If the structure of the data file needs to be changed in some way, for example, to reflect a change in currency, this alteration will need to be reflected in all application programs that use that data file. This problem is known as physical data dependence and will be examined in more detail later in the unit. While a data file is being processed by one application, the file will not be available for other applications or for ad hoc queries. This is because if more than one application is allowed to alter data in a file at one time, serious problems can arise in ensuring that the updates made by each application do not clash with one another. This issue of ensuring consistent, concurrent updating of information is an extremely important one and is dealt with in detail for database systems in their unit on concurrency control. File-based systems avoid these problems by not allowing more than one application to access a file at one time. The database approach is an improvement on the shared file solution as the use of a database management system, DBMS, provides facilities for querying data security and integrity and allows simultaneous access to data by a number of different users. At this point, we should explain some important terminology. The term database management system, often abbreviated to DBMS, refers to a software system used to store and retrieve data. The software of such systems is complex, consisting of a number of different components, which are described later in this unit. Another commonly encountered term is simply the word database, which usually refers to the collection of data stored within a database management system. The term database system is usually an alternative term for database management system. Finally, the term database application refers to a program or related set of programs which use the database management system to perform the computer-related tasks of a particular business function, such as order processing. One of the benefits of the database approach is that the problem of physical data dependence is resolved. This means that the underlying structure of a data file can be changed 
without the application programs needing amendment. This is achieved by a hierarchy of levels of data specification. Each such specification of data in a database system is called a schema. The different levels of schema provided in database systems are described below. Further details of what is included within each specific schema are discussed later in the unit. Application programs interact with the external database schema, which has an interface or mapping to the conceptual schema. The conceptual schema is concerned with the identity and relationships between elements of data of interest to an organization and has an interface or mapping to the internal schema. The internal schema controls how the data is stored on physical media such as magnetic disks. More details about the schema are given on the next slides. In a database environment, if there is a requirement to change the structure of a particular file of data held on disk, this will be recorded in the internal schema. The interface between the internal schema and the conceptual schema will be amended to reflect this, but there will be no need to change the external schema. This means that any such change of physical data storage is transparent to users and application programs. This approach removes the problem of physical data dependence. In a similar manner, any changes to the conceptual schema can be isolated from the external schema and the internal schema. Such changes will be reflected in the interface between the conceptual schema and the other levels. This achieves logical data independence. What this means effectively is that changes can be made at the conceptual level where the overall model of an organization's data is specified and these changes can be made independently of both the physical storage level and the external level seen by individual users. The changes are handled by the interfaces between the conceptual middle layer and the physical and external layers. The Systems Planning and Requirements Committee of the American National Standards Institute encapsulated these concepts in its three-level database architecture model, known as the ANSI, or Spark Architecture, which is shown in the diagram. ANSI equals American National Standards Institute. ANSI, or X3 equals Committee on Computers and Information Processing. SPRCE equals Standards Planning and Requirements Committee. The ANSI or Spark model is a three-level database architecture with a hierarchy of levels from their users and their applications at the top down to the physical storage of data at the bottom. The characteristics of each level represented by a scheme are now described. The external schemas describe the database as it is seen by the user and the user applications. The external schema maps onto the conceptual schema which is described below. There may be many external schemas, each reflecting a simplified model of the world as seen by particular applications. External schemas may be modified or new ones created without the need to make alterations to the physical storage of data. The interface between the external schema and the conceptual schema can be amended to accommodate any such changes. The external schema allows the application programs to see as much of the data as they require while excluding other items that are not relevant to that application. In this way, the external schema provides a view of the data that corresponds to the nature of each task. The external schema is more than a subset of the conceptual schema. While items in the external schema must be derivable from the conceptual schema, this could be a complicated process involving computation and other activities. The conceptual schema describes the universe of interest to the users of the database system. For a company, for example, it would provide a description of all of the data required to be stored in a database system. From this organization-wide description of the data, external schemas can be derived to provide the data for specific users or to support particular tasks. At the level of the conceptual schema, we are concerned with the data itself rather than storage or the way data is physically accessed on disk. 
the definition of storage, and access details is the preserve of the internal schema. A database will have only one internal schema, which contains definitions of the way in which data is physically stored. The interface between the internal schema and the conceptual schema identifies how an element in the conceptual schema is stored and how it may be accessed. If the internal schema is changed, this will need to be addressed in the interface between the internal and the conceptual schemas, but the conceptual and external schemas will not need to change. This means that changes in physical storage devices, such as disks and changes in the way files are organized on storage devices, are transparent to users and application programs. In distinguishing between logical and physical views of a system, it should be noted that the difference could depend on the nature of the user. While logical describes the user angle and physical relates to the computer view, database designers may regard relations for staff records as logical and the database itself as physical. This may contrast with the perspective of a systems programmer who may consider data files as logical in concept, but their implementation on magnetic disks and cylinders, tracks, and sectors as physical. Components of a DBMS The major components of a DBMS are as follows. DBMS Engine The engine is the central component of a DBMS. This component provides access to the database and coordinates all of the functional elements of the DBMS. An important source of data for the DBMS engine and the database system as a whole is known as metadata. Metadata means data about data. Metadata is contained in a part of the DBMS called the data dictionary described below and is a key source of information to guide the processes of the DBMS engine. The DBMS engine receives logical requests for data and metadata from human users and from applications, determines the secondary storage location, that is, the disk address of the request to data, and issues physical input or output requests to the computer operating system. The data requested is fetched from physical storage into computer main memory. It is contained there in special data structures provided by the DBMS. Whilst the data remains in memory, it is managed by the DBMS engine. Additional data structures are created by the database system itself or by users of the system in order to provide rapid access to data being processed by the system. These data structures include indexes to speed up access to the data, buffer areas into which particular types of data are retrieved, lists of free space, etc. The management of these additional data structures is also carried out by the DBMS engine. The interface subsystem provides facilities for users and applications to access the various components of the DBMS. Most DBMS products provide a range of languages and other interfaces since the system will be used both by programmers or other technical persons and by users with little or no programming experience. Some of the typical interfaces to a DBMS are the following. A data definition language or data sublanguage, which is used to define, modify, or remove database structures, such as records, tables, files, and views. A data manipulation language which is used to display data extracted from the database and to perform simple updates and deletions. A data control language that allows a database administrator to have overall control of the system, often including the administration of security so that access to both the data and processes of the database system can be controlled. A graphical user interface which may provide a visual means of browsing or querying the data, including a range of different display options such as bar charts, pie charts, etc. One particular example of such a system is query by example, in which the system displays a skeleton table, or tables, and users pose requests by suitable entry in the table. A forms user interface, in which a screen-oriented form is presented to the user, who responds by filling in blanks in the form. 
such forms-based systems are a popular means of providing a visual front-end both to developers and to users of a database system. Typically developers use the forms-based system in developer mode where they design the forms or screens that will make up an application and attach fragments of code which will be triggered by the actions of users as they use the forms-based user interface. ADBMS procedural programming language, often based on standard third-generation programming languages such as C and COBOL which allows programmers to develop sophisticated applications. Fourth-generation languages, such as Smalltalk, JavaScript, etc. These permit applications to be developed relatively quickly compared to the procedural languages. A natural language user interface that allows users to present requests in free-form English statements like pie chart have unnecessary capital. The Data Dictionary subsystem is used to store data about many aspects of how the DBMS works. The data contained in the Dictionary subsystem varies from DBMS to DBMS, but in all systems, it is a key component of the database. Typical data to be contained in the dictionary includes definitions of the users of the system and the access rights they have. Details of the data structures used to contain data in the DBMS. Descriptions of business rules that are stored and enforced within the DBMS. Definitions of the additional data structures used to improve systems performance. It is important to understand that because of the importance and sensitive nature of the data contained in the dictionary subsystem, most users will have none or little direct access to this information.